fall 1944. Paris has been liberated and the German army squeezed between Allied armies in Italy, France and Russia engages in increasingly frantic efforts to protect its dwindling territory. Soon little will be left except the fatherland itself if the Allies can be kept from crossing the Rhine River. Under cover of camouflage netting, the artillery has slept. Now it comes alive, ready once again to answer the call of war. With captured French railway artillery, with Germany's own massive railway guns, with rail-mounted coast defense guns, the German army stages a desperate defense. The heavy railway artillery, which caused such incredible destruction in World War I, is now an old soldier. All but obsolete since airplanes became the weapons of choice for heavy bombardment in this second world war. Its age, however, has not affected its power. The sons of the Third Reich strain under the weight of thousand-pound shells, with slave labor augmenting their efforts. In all heavy guns, the weight of the shell directly relates to its destructive power. The gun itself is the machine which delivers the shell's destructive force. A locomotive with tens of thousands of pounds of tractive effort hauls forth another artillery behemoth. Now is revealed the descendant of the Paris gun, one of the most powerful pieces of heavy railway artillery of the previous war. The huge barrel strains skyward. The direction and distance are set. Across many miles, the gun rains death and injury on the unseen opponent. In the far distance, untold damage is suffered. Another gun is laid. Again. And again, the railway artillery is reloaded. Spent shells litter the landscape. The German soldiers follow their shots, hoping that the advance has been stopped. In this awesome display of firepower, a low groan is heard. It comes not from the Allied forces, but from the last remaining Axis power. It is the death rattle of the German military machine.